Hello, and welcome to episode one of How to Get Started in Kerbal Space Program Realism Overhaul. I'm Falcon Flight 2000, and today we'll be playing Kerbal Space Program with the um, Realism Overhaul and Realistic Progression Zero mod packs. The Realism Overhaul mod pack attempts to take Kerbal Space Program and make it much more realistic by um, uh, turning the Kerbal system into our solar system, um, which makes it much larger. Kerbin itself is ten times larger. Um, the similar scale with most of the planets. Um, it, it also attempts to make the systems in the game more realistic, such as aerodynamics and reentry heating, with mods like Fair Aerospace and Deadly Reentry, and um, real fuels and realism mods. Um, realistic Progression Zero is an add-on for Realism Overhaul, which attempts to add a cur um, basically creates and balances a career mode um, and tech tree for um, Realism Overhaul. So today we're going to just talk about, um, we're not going to do any flights, we're going to talk about getting started in the game and um, what some of the different systems mean. Um, I have a few mods installed in addition to the basic mods um, re recommended by um, Realism Overhaul and Realistic Progression Zero. Um, I'll have a full list of them in the, in the description down below. So the first thing you'll wanna, want to do is create a new game, a career mode, so we're going to name it realism over overhaul if I can type here tutorial uh, now for difficulty options realis realistic progression zero attempts to keep about the same difficulty curve as uh, basic Kerbal Space Program so you'll want to play on moderate or hard although they do recommend if you play on hard bring science rewards back up to 80% as um, science is a bit scarce there's no si almost no science on the ground on Kerbin. Um, you can't, you know, run around the different biomes of the space center. So, so I have a bit more resources to show you, show you all things. I'm going to go with moderate. Um, and um, so, uh, just leave everything there for moderate if you want to start. Um, so, pretty pretty easy there. You can select your flag. I'm going to select NASA because NASA's great. So as we load into the Kerbal Space Center here, you'll immediately see several different icons pop up, and the landscape may look slightly different. Um, uh, it's not quite like normal Kerbal Space Program, well, obviously. So you get the same greeting message that you do in normal KSP when you start a career. Now the first thing you'll see here is Kerbal Construction Time. This is one of the mods I told you about. Um, I really like this one. Basically what it does is instead of being allowed to build rockets and launch them instantly, so you could launch you know, several missions a day, um, it uh, me makes it so that it, depending on the build of your vehicle, how many, um, how many times you've built it before, what parts you've used before on other vehicles, um, it basically adds well, construction time for your, your, your vehicles, so you have to build them first. So you'll see it um, as a little intro, you've got upgrade points, uh, blah 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 stuff. Uh, so immediately you want to go into upgrades. Now, you see there are 15 points available. There are three categories here, VAB, SPH, and Research and Development. I'm going to quickly explain them. V um, vehicle Assembly Building, there are two rates so far. If you buy the second rate, then an option to buy a third rate will appear. Um, basically this is the rate at which you build vehicles. Um, you, rate 1 is the speed at which you can build one vehicle, but if you upgraded rate 2, then you could build you know, two vehicles at once. One would build at the speed of rate 1, and the other would build at the speed of rate 2. The space plane hangar is effectively the same, just with the space plane hangar inst instead of the vehicle assembly building. Research and development is a bit different. You can upgrade research here, which means um, for y this gives you science. for Research gives you science for building vehicles. Um, uh, build points are what um, uh, Kerbal Construction Time uses to figure out how many, um, how long it takes to build your vehicle. As you can see in VAB, it's um, build points per second is how fast is the measurement of time for uh, speed for building your vehicle. Uh, research will um, give you a certain amount of science. If you upgrade research, you'll get some science every for every 86,400 build points that you built. You can upgrade it to get more science for so many build points. 
development gives you a certain amount of science per day, um, so it's independent of whether or not you build vehicles. Now, vehicle assembly building and space plane hangar upgrades are um, uh, independent of each. Well, they're um, they're not global upgrades. Um, there are multiple launch sites, which we'll get into later. Uh, the upgrades for the vehicle assembly building and space plane hangar are per location, but upgrades to research and development are universal. So I'm going to pour all of my upgrades into the vehicle assembly building, because that's generally the best thing to do, although if you wanted to get some science... Mm, sure, I'll get some science. But one science per day. Sure. So we don't want to get to 0 0.8. Um, so that's that. You, you we now have 0 0.8 build points per second. R&D is developing one science per day, and the space building hangar is well. We didn't really upgrade that, but we won't be using that very much. The next important section is tech manager. Now this is for realistic progression zero, so it'll ask you to enable something. So you, uh, you you want to click enable, and then it'll ask you for several tech trees. Now realistic progression zero does not create its own tech tree, instead it modifies the tree provided by community tech tree, so you'll want to select that. Click select, and there you go, that's, that's your research and development tree. Okay, so the next important concept to understand is the multiple launch sites. To do that, we're going to go into the tracking station here. You'll get this message from Gene Kerman again, but um, this is your view of the, of Kerbin, well, Earth, and um, the, there's the moon. Um, the moon is on quite an inclined orbit relative to the Earth's equator. So back to Kerbin here, you'll notice these launch site buttons here, and there are a bunch of red dots. That's, those are stations for um, remote tech. We'll, I'll, I, I'll probably have a separate video on that. But you'll see there's all these launch sites, and they each have names. I can click on them, and it will change my launch site. So now I'm in Woomera in Australia. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I'm sorry. But that's going to happen a lot. Omelek is in the middle of the ocean, and then there are just launch sites, you know, all over the place. One, um, just for reference, um, Kuru uh, in Brazil, with FR, I assume that's France. But um, it's the launch site closest to the equator. Um, uh, Omelec is a bit off the equator, so if you're launching into an equatorial orbit, optimally, um, unless you're limiting yourself to a certain amount of launch sites or certain places, like say if you wanted to play as the United States and only give yourself these launch sites, um, you wouldn't use this. But if you do want to use this, this is for um, equatorial launch sites. So we're gonna, we were at Cape Canaveral. That's where it starts by default. So we're going to go to Brownsville. So we'll go back. And now, when we click back, it will, you'll notice the terrain looks slightly different here. Um, that's because it basically moved the, the Space Center. Uh, we're now in Brownsville. So if we go into the button here for um, Kerbal Construction Time, we can go to Upgrades. And you'll see there, I have 15 points available. And it says Available, there are 15 total points, and 14 points available. Now, um, like I said, the Vehicle Assembly Building and Space Plane Hangar are per location, but R&D is universal. So we already have that extra R&D, so we have 14 points available, 14 points left for the Vehicle Assembly Building and the Space Plane Hangar in Brownsville. And if I wanted to make this my, say, my plane testing area, then I'll upgrade the Space Plane Hangar instead of the Vehicle Assembly Building. So I could build space planes faster at Brownsville, and... Uh, rockets faster at Cape Canaveral. So that's um, one, one last important note about um, uh, Kerbal Construction Time. If you build something at one launch site and then go to another launch site, it will still build the one at the first launch site. It's, it's always going on. And if you build a vehicle at Brownsville, there, there is no method to transport vehicles, so um, Kerbal Construction Time will recognize your built vehicle as being at Brownsville, and there is no way to launch it from anywhere else. I learned that the hard way. Um, but anyways, next section. 
And lastly, to finish off the episode, I'll briefly go over the menus up at the top corner here on the toolbar. So, let's start off with this first one over here. This is from the ScanSat mod. It's the altimetry map. Um, you can change the map type from altimetry, slope biome. You have options for the projection. You can display resources if you have mods like that. Um, uh, you can toggle a vari the display of various things. It's a you know, pretty simple map. And you have this here. This is texture replacer. This is the thing that adds all the variety for Kerbals. Um, you know, they have different features like uh, facial hair. Um, th this is also the one that removes their helmets when when, when they EVA. Um, they don't have helmets on when they're in a safe situation. And it also adds these the reflections, which are awesome. Then this is the B9 procedural part options. This is one of those mods that um, is not recommended. Uh, well, um, is not on the recommend recommended list for Realism Overhaul or RP0. Um, it's a different kind of procedural wing. It has some um, more customization options than the default um, procedural wings, the ones in the other mod, um, but um, is recommended, so I use these. Um, this this menu just allows you to see the um, the, the log file, the log files, and the output if you're having issues with it. Um, Daily re-entry, these are settings to make it easier or harder. You can use the old model, you have the option to use the old model. An alternate density calc um, uh, just makes it harder. As you can see, when you go to hard difficulty, it turns on alternate density calc, then normal turns it off. So that adjusts how difficult deadly re-entry is. Ferrum Aerospace, several things here. Debug options allows you to change them. Um, uh, there's things you can see in the right-click menu, um, uh, debug options. Um, then you have, um, there are default action group assignments for spoilers and flaps. You can change whether or not it uses um, the stock toolbar or the Blizzy toolbar, which is over here. And um, You can also change the graph colors here. Part classification just controls how, um, uh, some, how Ferrum Aerospace treats parts. It treats some parts some, uh, specially, like it'll treat some. Uh, these are parts with low orientation, unaffect, um, orientation or unaffected drag, things like heat shields, ladders. Um, uh, these are special parts that don't get a far drag model. These are special parts that are used as fairings or cargo bays, and you can add or remove things from this list here. Aerodynamic failure is that annoying thing when you're flying really fast and then you pull up really hard and your wings fly off. Um, it's just structural failures from... Uh, uh, aerodynamic problems, you can adjust the settings for that. And atmospheric composition allows you to change things like the density and the, um, the composition of, of the, um, the atmosphere, and it changes the way aircraft perform. And you can do it for any celestial body. Then we have real chute settings here. Automatically arm when deploying. Um, arms the um, a parachute, like if you're deploying a drogue chute, it'll automatically arm the main chute. Um, part GUI resize will update canopy size, so the canopy will change sizes with the part ju part resize. Um, then April Fool's joke. Um, I have had I've been playing this mod or playing with real shoot for quite a while, and I I have turned this on and I haven't seen any difference. I must be missing something. So if anyone knows what the April Fool's joke is, please put it in the comments down below. Next we have Kerbal Alarm Clock, which um. Uh, is well, you've probably seen or used this before. It allows you to put alarms and um, that will stop time warp and alert you when something happens. You can also add alarms in the um, the flight window. Um, this allows you to add just raw time alarm, a transfer window, contract alarm. You can also add alarms for a vehicle's sphere of influence change, maneuver nodes, things like that. It helps you when you're trying to run multiple missions at the same time. Lastly, we have the um, Kerbal Construction Time Menu. I already went over most, went th over the upgrade section, but um, just you can click VAB here. You can see vehicles that are being constructed and vehicles that are currently in storage that have been built. Same thing with the space plane hangar. I already went over upgrades and settings. There's just a few settings here. You can change whether it's enabled, whether build times are enabled. Um, instant Tech Unlock is disabled by default, but um, uh, I feel like it takes too long when you have it in um I disabled, so I enable Instant Tech Unlock, Override Body Tracker. Funds Recovery mod changes how um, you recover funds. Um, it's another mod that um, when, a v when a like a dropped stage from a launch vehicle gets more than 2.5 kilometers away, it will um, automatically calculate things like um, 
like if it has parachutes, you know, how softly it will land, how far it will land away from uh, the Kerbal, from the Space Center, things like that, and it allows you to recover funds from drop stages instead of just having them evaporate, basically. Free simulations changes um, whether or not simulations cost a small amount of money. I'll go over simulations in more detail in another video. Reconditioning is enabled. That allows you to take parts that you've recovered and put them in your inventory instead of um, having instead of getting some cash for them. Global settings, there's settings for time warp and the messages you get and Kerbal, it automatically will set um, KAC alarms. Um, auto check for updates, recovery, um, then uh, stuff about checking for updates. Time, uh, this changes how it builds things. You can make everything build faster or slower. You can change the inventory effects, so having parts in your inventory speeds up or um, speeds up the building process more or less. You know, reconditioning rollout changes you know, how much you know, build points it costs per um, uh, so many tons. There's a max uh, reconditioning and then rollout changes the speed and the cost of a vehicle being rolled out from storage onto the launch pad. And defaults just sets what is default. When you create a new game, you know, a new save, it'll default to these settings here. Um, then, then the last two options are the contracts window here, which you already know about, and the um, the messages here, which are once again, uh, once again, part of the stock game. All right, uh, this concludes the um, this episode of uh, re realism overhaul Kerbal Space Program uh, tutorials. Um, if you enjoyed the video, or if, if it was helpful for you, um, remember to like and subscribe for more. Um, if you had a question that I didn't, a question about something I didn't answer here, or just wanted to say something, remember to leave a comment below. Um, uh, there um, will be links to the other tutorials in the description down below, as well as a li full list of the mods I have. But for now, this is Falconfly2000 signing off. See you next time.